In the summer of 2014, Glasgow hosted the Commonwealth Games, which was seen at the time as a real success. As was mentioned in Colin's interview with the First Minister, Glasgow has now entered the race to stage it again in 2026. It was supposed to be the Australian state of Victoria's turn to host, but they pulled out amid rising costs. If no other venue is found, Glasgow is on standby to step in. We are not asking for public money. We are not taking money out of any budgets that, um, for local authorities for Scottish Government. This is £100 million that's made available from the Commonwealth Games Federation from their Victorian settlement that will come into the city and we'll raise more money on top of that from tickets, from sponsorship, from broadcast rights, etc. Is it not a good thing for someone to bring that sort of money in, which will translate perhaps to one and a half or two times the economic value? Fill bars, fill hotels, fill restaurants. Yes, we should put a little bit of investment into making sure the city looks its best, but based on previous games, that will translate to a heck of a lot more. Planners are looking at a cut price version of what we had in 2014, which cost £543 million and featured 18 sports. We're told that the Games in 2026 would cost much less, no more than £150 million, and the number of sports would be reduced. So would such an event be a win for Glasgow and Scotland? We brought together the retired runner Lee McConnell, who's a two-time Commonwealth Games medalist, and Professor Gail McPherson, who was in the 2014 bid committee and has acted as an advisor for the new bid. Uh, Gail, how feasible is this bid from Glasgow? And it is a bid. Um, yes, proposals had to be in on the 22nd of March if you were willing to host the Games. So they're with Commonwealth Games Federation to consider and they're in negotiation with a few nations, I'm led to believe. But um, from Glasgow's point of view, very feasible. We have the infrastructure, we have all the venues from Glasgow 2014 and beyond because of the, the events that we've hosted since. So it would have to be a very scaled down event and um, arguably a chance for a reset and a bit more innovation and with sustainability, environmental issues considered and economic time that we have at the moment, then this would give us an opportunity to showcase what we already have and we know we can deliver. Glasgow is, is struggling a wee bit now with uh, a lot of people are saying that the city is not in a particularly good place at the moment and there's obviously funding issues are key to that. Um, sh would this take uh, public funds? Could it be guaranteed that it won't? No, we made a commitment that this wouldn't be public funds and unusually they're being offered £100 million to run the Games. So um, I think I'd said in most sectors if, if a private investor came along and offered you £100 million to do something, you would be jumping at that chance. So you have £100 million to use venues that you already have, albeit um, you, you may have to make some adaptions to them, but that's easily enough done within the timescale. And that's crucial because we only have two years, so it really does need to go to a nation that has the infrastructure structure and the, and the facilities already, already there. And for Glasgow, with the venues in place, um, if you look at 2026, there's no major events planned for Glasgow for 2026. So this is a, a great opportunity to almost have a double legacy of showing that we can, we can deliver on that and add to the public um, wellbeing. And, and Lee, what does it mean to athletes to compete in their home country? It's fantastic for an athlete to compete on home soil in front of a home crowd. Um, it's one of the best experiences you can ever have as a, you know, as an athlete. Um, Commonwealth Games is a really important event for sports. Um, it's a really good stepping stone to sort of some of the bigger competitions that, that we strive for. So um, yeah, to have it on home soil for an athlete is a, is a big deal. There was a lot of praise for the Commonwealth Games in Glasgow in 2014 and of course, particularly in terms of athletics, we had a Hamden Stadium for that. This would use Scotston, which is obviously not on the same scale. Would that affect it in any way? Would it make it lesser? I mean, Hamden was a fantastic athletic stadium. Um, I was there every day the athletics was on and the atmosphere was incredible. Um, Scotston, it's obviously going to be a smaller stadium, so tickets will be, <laughs> will be, will be hard to come by. Um, but I think part of it is, you know, having a really good crowd and filling a stadium is what the important thing is. And, you know, Glasgow have shown that any event they host, they can 
put people in those seats, you know, people out at the Glasgow regions, you know, and Scotland as a whole, they are keen to go and watch sporting events. Every event sells out that, you know, that Glasgow hosts and they have hosted quite a fair few events in the, you know, over the past 10 years or more. Well, that, so a lot of people will talk about legacy and, and we'll, th there's probably two elements to that legacy. So, so I'll come to you first on that, Gail, just to pick up on, on Lee's point, that hosting further events, what was, in terms of sporting events, what was the legacy of 2014 for Glasgow? Well, we set our stall out as a sporting nation. It wasn't just Glasgow, but Scotland as well. And we saw the benefits of that with upgrades to lots of our facilities. And as I said, you know, Toe Cross was able to host the IPC World Swimming Para Championships in 2015, for example. We wouldn't have been able to bid for that at all had we not made those changes to facilities. So things like that, that maybe not the general public don't always know about, and all the road infrastructures like the M74, the development of the East End of Glasgow, the social um, and private housing out of the Athletes' Village, they're all hugely important to the people of Glasgow and and are able to make a difference to the quality of life for people and our well-being. So these are all legacies from hosting 2014. And Lee, what about the athletic legacy or the sporting legacy that people have produced and people have taken up sport? Yeah, I think sort of obviously going back to what Gail said, the facilities we now have for athletes, you know, for home athletes to train in is fantastic. Um, my sport athletics since 2014, you know, we've now got Josh Kerr, we've got um, Laura Muir. They didn't win medals at Commonwealth Games, but um, it was a good stepping stone for Laura, certainly, and it inspired some of the younger ones and we've got you know Jake Whiteman you know we've got, so we've, you know, we've got a couple of a couple of world championship champions there um, so it was fantastic for that sport but I think for other sports as well there was an influx I know in certain sports there's wait lists for children to get into the clubs because they're now needing to get, get as many coaches as they can so there definitely was a legacy because there was the numbers increased across a variety of sports and would you be concerned that we're talking about scaled back Commonwealth Games that some sports will have to be dropped would that concern it's a shame to, to lose sports, but I think that is the climate we're in, you know, across the world at the moment, that cities, you know, and countries aren't really able to host the bigger events at the moment. So if, if it means keeping it, then I think a scaled back version, you know, is a good idea. And there's nothing to say that it can't become bigger again once sort of um, times change. And what does scaled back mean, Gail? Well, I think we're, we're looking at moving from 20 sports to 10 to 13 sports. We're seeing that in the smaller venues. It will probably move more to a digital experience and a digital audience. Um, you know, potentially opening and closing ceremonies, not a big thing the way they were before, but maybe out of the hydro or something like that. But these people are experts in running that. But, you know, as Lee said, you have to remember for the Commonwealth, there's 74 nations and country, countries in territories in the Commonwealth, many of them don't get to compete at the Olympics at all, so they really wouldn't want to see the Commonwealth go. And, and from an athlete's point of view, you, you're a Commonwealth medal winner, is there a, a case for, well, it, so many people can't host this, that actually we should just let it fade away? I don't think we should let it fade away. I think it's really important. Um, I think it is a great stepping stone, you know, for track and field. We've got four major championships and the Commonwealth Games competing for Scotland is, you know, is the first rung on that ladder to you know world championships olympic games and it gives you a really good experience a good education for what another event that um, is going to look like for you oh. and doing that within a scottish team and a scottish vest it's a really nice like i said stepping stone for those bigger events and a good education for athletes to to go into bigger things well we shall see thank you both for joining us in scotland tonight thank, thank you, you.